Does that work? I did it. I broke the ice. Now it's time for you to jump in. Speaking of jumping in, we're going to give it a few more minutes before we jump into what I have to talk with you about today. We're going to talk about everything from motivation to what I do to the way I think about it. I'm going to tell some stories about my photography. I'm going to show you some cool photos. And guess what? Today is brought to you by Sony Alpha. If you didn't know, I am a Sony Alpha ambassador. I am using a Sony Alpha camera right now. I swear by it. I put my trust in it and they put their trust in me. Hence, this live stream brought directly to you by them. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will give it a few more minutes just to let a few more people show up because you can't have a party without a party of people. And you know what? I rescind that. I immediately regret saying that. But guess what? Stream of thought. This is how live streaming goes. I cannot back down now. You're going to have to accept it. I also like touching the microphone a lot. If that makes too much noise, let me know. If the music is too loud, let me know. If I am too loud, let me know. If the music is too shitty, I will ignore your complaints because it is copyright free. That guy, Nilf, says, where is that picture taken? That picture is taken in Galsta Toppen. This was a beautiful day. It was fantastically sunny. Just enough snow that it wasn't uh, the easiest walk, but it wasn't skiable. So we hiked, and it was beautiful. It was fantastic. Roger Holman is in the chat. Roger, the man, the myth, the legend himself. One of my most loyal subscribers. Never lets me down. Always shows up in the chat. And if you're in the chat as well, I dare you to drop a line. I dare you. The ice has been broken. We are here to tell stories. So tell me a story. Tell me about your day. What did you get up to? Did you get as sunburnt as I did? Or did you manage to avoid it? Are you stuck at home still? Or at you, are you at the office? Are you still working now? If so, thank you for abandoning work for a little bit to come hang out with me. I am going to tell you a bit more about me here in a second. First, we're going to give the chat a few more minutes to warm up. Roger says, I've been looking forward to, this, to more streams. You know what? More streams are coming your way. I am streaming every single day this week, except for Friday, but next Monday too. And they are all brought to you by Sony Alpha, my favorite camera company. Hopefully your favorite camera company. They are great people. Once again, I apologize for the music. It is free. I especially hate this song, so I'm going to skip it. It is free, and that is all I'm allowed to play. That guy, Nelf, says, why aren't you streaming on Twitch? You know what? I have asked myself that same question a million times. How about this? I will ask you a question. Why should I stream on Twitch? What does Twitch have over YouTube? Why should I abandon YouTube, the largest video hosting program on the internet, to go to Twitch, the largest streaming program on the internet? Fun fact, I do have a Twitch account, and I did stream a lot of video games back in the day. That might come back soon, now that I finally have photography work and I don't have to worry about busting my ass to make the industry come back to life again. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that here in a second. Once again, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That guy, Nilf, stoked you are breaking some ice in the chat. Roger, also stoked you are breaking some ice in the chat. What are you guys up to? How's your day been? What does your week look like? How was your three-day weekend? Wasn't that fantastic? If you are in Oslo, that was one of the greatest three-day weekends we've ever had. The sun, the friends, the good times. You know what? We're not going to let the week stop us. The good times are going to continue to roll. And I am here to facilitate that. That is my job. That is my job. I'm going to turn down the music a little bit, and we're going to get started. How's that? How's the music? Is it too loud? Is it too annoying? Let me know. If it's too much for you, I will turn down even more. We'll go to here. How about this? We'll go to here. Let's do here. This is perfect. Ivar says, what is up? Ivar, what is up with you? How are you doing? Let me know. Tell me, how was your day, Ivar? What did you get up to today? Roger says, editing photos while watching this is perfect. Hey, I am happy to have you being productive while I am being unproductive. This is perfect. We balance out. We need each other. We're the yin and yang of productive photography, photo editing, and whatnot. 
That is why I'm here for it. And you know what? Speaking of productivity, let's get started. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kyle Meyer. I am a photographer. I am a Sony Alpha ambassador. I am a cool dude, I like to think. I'm just trying to find where my presentation is. <laughs> it has escaped me. Ah, there it is. Okay, cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, Lars Kralis says, eating dinner while watching this is perfect. Yes, have enough dinner for the both of us, Lars. We need it. Lars and I were shooting today, hence all the red. Look, watch. I will show you some magic. I don't know if you can see this. This is, uh, this is pretty ridiculous. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> that's how successful today was. And I promise you, it does not feel as bad as it looks. But let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Kyle Meyer. I am a Sony Alpha ambassador. This stream is brought to you by the brand itself, Sony Alpha. Thank you so much, Sony. I believe in your cameras, and I'm glad you believe in me. Let's get started. Explore more. That is what this is about. I am a photographer. I work commercial, I do adventure, I do basically whatever makes me happy. And I am here, hopefully, to make you happy. If you have anything to say, drop a line in the chat. Lars says, I am as red. Yes, it's been a long day. Ever says, love the positive vibe. Just been hanging out, also editing photos. This is great. This is what I like to hear. Productive photographers doing cool things. I'm stoked. Ever, send me a link to your photos. Let the chat know that you're shooting some cool stuff. I want to see what's going on. That guy, Nelf, says Twitch tends to pay more than YouTube. Guess what? YouTube isn't paying me shit. <laughs> so at the moment, it doesn't matter too much. Not right now. And I'm not in it for the money. I'm here to hang out with you guys, my favorite people on the planet. And I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. But hey, let me introduce myself real quick. This was me when I was cooler. <laughs> How about that? I'm going to move this over to here. Let's get it out of the way. This is me back when I was a cool kid, back when I uh, grew up in the States. I was young. I was tiny. I was innocent back then. I loved everything fast. I loved everything sporty. I loved everything with movement. And you know what? I grew up with that, and it's the greatest, and I love it, and I'm here now because of that. And over the years, all these kind of sports, these things that I love, this football, this skiing, everything that I was doing when I was a kid, it led me to becoming more adventurous. More and more adventurous because you know what? You can't just do these things at home. You have to get out there and explore. You have to see the world. You have to see the world and you have to practice your talents in new areas and you have to push yourself. And that led me to understand that if I was watching something happen fast, like if I was watching sports or if I was watching skiing or cars, and I love cars. Cars are so near and dear to me. I'll talk to you a bit more about that. If you blinked at the right time, you would remember that frame so much better than you would if you would just watch the whole thing play out. And you know what? I think that was the beginning of my obsession with photography. But that was decades before I picked up a camera that I noticed that. Decades. I'm old now. I get to say that. Wow, crazy. And with that came the idea of storytelling. And I loved storytelling. I loved sharing these views. And I loved trying to explain how much fun I was having with people. And that storytelling led to me wanting to become a journalist, the ultimate storyteller, right? You go out there, you get the cool leads, and you get to write the stories and talk to people about what was going on. That was awesome to me. So I went to London for three years. Three years. I got stuck in London, and I studied, and I studied, and I finally got my bachelor's degree in journalism, a piece of paper that says, congrats, you did it. Guess what? I haven't done shit with it since, but you know what? I have it, and you can't take that away from me. So... London made me realize that I did not want to be in London. So I moved back to Norway and I became more and more and more adventurous until I discovered my love for photography and I bought my first camera and I said, this is it. This is it. Finally, my calling. I'm not a journalist. I'm a photographer. I can tell stories with the images. I don't have to use the words and the words weren't good enough all of a sudden. I could do more photos and I took the camera with me everywhere. I went skiing with my friends. That was awesome. Friends are good people. They're good skiers. And you know what? They were nice enough to ski in front of the lens for me. I'm just going to move this. Uh, I'm just going to move this a little bit out of the way just so uh, it's not bothering everybody. They were good people, and they let me bring the camera and take photos. 
and that was awesome. And the more I took photos with them, the more I got like, obsessed with it and I wouldn't let go of the camera. I wouldn't, you couldn't get it from me. And then I joined them on bigger shoots because they were getting better and I was getting better and they wanted me around. So I was taking pictures on these shoots. And one of the first shoots I did was this massive big air shoot up in Narvik in Northern Norway. Beautiful with a company called chaos productions. It was awesome. And after that shoot, some of the sponsors of the skier said, Hey, we could use some of these photos. And I said, Hey, I could use some of that money. <laughs> so I sold them the photos and they were awesome enough to give me money for them. And it was great. And we had this exchange. And then the more I did that, the more I wanted to do more of it. So I started selling myself as a quote unquote professional. And suddenly, because I called myself a professional, people were treating me as a professional. And I was getting money, I was getting more and more clients and things just kept snowballing and it became a career for me. It wasn't just a hobby, it wasn't just a passion, it was a career. And that's awesome, and that's where I am today. Some of my clientele recently include people like Solomon Sports, one of my oldest and most loyal clients, uh, Sony Alpha. Thank you, Sony Alpha, for sponsoring the stream. Once again, I can't say it enough. It includes people like right now, today I shop for Mitsubishi, for example. Uh, it includes tons of adventurous companies, tons of companies that apply to me. I'll tell you a little bit more about that and how to go about finding work like that if you wanna become a photographer in a second. But the more I said yes to these photo shoots, the more opportunities came up that I wasn't super comfortable with. There was a company, for example, called Hellsport. They sell tents. One of my most loyal clients, one of the most fantastic companies in the world. Nicest people, greatest products. They asked me to go on a five-day camping trip up north. And you know what? I don't camp that often. I never did. So I wasn't really used to the idea of taking photos nonetheless, bringing enough batteries and enough memory space to shoot in the rain, to shoot northern lights. And I didn't know how to do all this. But you know what? I said yes. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to figure it out. So... I went up and I realized discomfort might actually be my favorite position to find myself working in. It was fantastic, it was fantastic. In fact, this photo here that I'm showing now is from my one of my first ever ski touring trips. The first ever ski touring trip I did, I did with borrowed equipment. I didn't know how to do it, I had no idea. But I said yes. I said yes, you know what, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna put on these boots, I'm gonna put on these skis and I'm gonna hike up there. And it took me a long time. That guy Nilf, I have to go. Good luck with your stream. Keep on. Thank you very much. Stoked you drop by. Hopefully I'll see you again later. Thank you for dropping your IG. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm going to use this as a moment to plug the chat. If you are in the chat, if you are watching the stream, share your stories. Tell me about how your day has been. Tell me about how Corona has been treating you. Let loose. We're not at work now. Let loose. Let's keep this party going. So I said yes. Back to the story. And I went and I hiked. And if you've ever shot ski touring or took photos of ski touring, you have to go in front of them, take the photos, and then fall behind them, take different photos from different angles. And we did that all the way up, and oh my God, it was a pain in the ass. It was so difficult, so difficult. I've been an avid skier all my life, but I've never hiked with ski boots. And I got to the top, and my feet were dying, dying like mad blisters. I was dying. But you know what? I had accomplished something new. Not only that, I had taken photos I didn't even know were possible to take because I never left a chairlift. So I got all this new content. I got new clients. I made new friends. And it was all because I said yes, yes to an uncomfortable situation. Suddenly, discomfort became my comfort zone. And I kept saying yes to these things. And then my job sort of expanded. And I was shooting ultra marathons. And I was shooting hiking. And I was shooting all these crazy things I'd never done before. And you know what? It's one of the most incredible feelings in the world when you say yes to something you're not quite sure of and then you get there and you learn how to do it and you nail it and you learn that you love it. So that's where I am today. That is me in a nutshell. This next slide, this is the most boring slide on the whole presentation, so I won't, won't spend too much time here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about motivation, what it is, where it is, whatever, how do I use it? And here we go, guess what? Motivation, before I start drowning myself in my own spit, I'm gonna drink. Mm. My Lord, my Lord, I'm thirsty. It is hot out there. It is hot out there. Motivation is a strange one because motivation, it's innate, right? It's innate, it's something we're born with. It's not something that you learn. You can't just learn to be motivated. We all have a certain amount of it because it's just, inevitable that you're gonna look at a photo 
and you're going to get a little bit jealous and you're going to want to go out and do the same thing. That's motivation, right? We're motivated to accomplish. We're motivated by adventure. We're motivated by other people. We're motivated by money, whatever it is. You're motivated. You're motivated. And I want to break down motivation into three easy, hopefully easy to understand bullet points. Because if you can't break down a topic into three bullet points, then what's the point of having the topic? So number one, motivation is the willingness and desire to accomplish. This is something, like I said, that is innate. Humans want to accomplish. It's just in us. Otherwise, where would we go? We wouldn't have anything to do. We wouldn't be productive. We wouldn't, as a, hum as a race, as a species, there would be nothing that would come of it. So this is something innate, this willingness and desire to accomplish. Second, a clear and defined goal or vision. Motivation is nothing unless you have a target. If you set off on a road trip and you don't have a destination, you're just driving around. There's no point. There's no drive. There's no nothing pushing you in a certain direction. You have to have that direction. Without that direction, there's no motivation. Or it's not motivation worth having. And the third point is a reason for wanting to reach that goal. You need a reason for wanting to get there. Not only do you have the goal, the vision, the direction, the town maybe that you're trying to drive to in this hypothetical road trip. You need a reason for wanting to get there. There has to be something that's dragging you there. Whether it's the journey yourself or if you're a photographer and it's a new skill, a new talent, a new photo. Maybe there's money at the end of the rainbow. Maybe it's a monetary gain. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just something to do. Maybe you just want a reason to get yourself out of bed to go do something. You need that reason. That reason is key. But here's the thing about motivation is it's useless without habits. Habits are greater than motivation. And this is something that I lean on very, very, very aggressively because habits are key. Habits are key. And once again, if you can't break it down to three points, then it's not worth breaking down. But here, these are in order of first to last. So let me break down habit into three steps. Step one is habit turns creativity into productivity. So you're motivated, right? You're motivated. And guess what? You're creative. You're a photographer. You're here, right? I assume you like pictures. I assume you like cameras. You're here. So you're a creative person. It's in you. You want to create things. You want things to look cool and you want the visual interpretation of whatever it is you're thinking. So without habit, that dies there, that creativity. But if you're in good habit and you're willing to wake up and go see the sunrise or you're willing to push yourself to go outside and hike the mountain or you're willing to go, I don't know, meet new friends who are good at new talents that you want to try documenting like cars or skateboarding or skiing or whatever it is, fashion, why not? You can't shoot fashion just by yourself. You need a model. It's key. Having good habits turns that creativity into productivity. Suddenly you're outside and you're in the habit of going out there and making this happen. You found that model and you're going to go out and shoot. That's step one. Step two, productivity turns inspiration into output. We have all been there. Let me pitch you a hypothetical situation. You are on the toilet. I'm guessing half of you are currently, and I applaud you. And once you wipe, I bid you farewell because you're off to do better things. But let me put you in this situation. You are on the toilet. You are on Instagram or whatever. I almost said Facebook. Facebook's old. You're on Instagram. You're swiping. You find that sick picture of somebody in Bali. I don't know, surfing or in the jungle, doing something cool. And you're thinking, you know what? I want to go there and I want to do something cool. That is inspiration. That is what inspiration, that moment is inspiration and your willingness to think about that moment and to understand that moment, that is motivation. You are motivated. You are motivated. But guess what? If you aren't in a good habit of going out and capturing this motivation and turning it into productivity, you're just going to get off that toilet, flush, and you're going to walk away. Your dreams will flush with the rest of the shit that just came out of you. <laughs> so if you are in good habits, suddenly that photo inspires you. You've got the creativity and you decide, you know what? I'm going to go do it myself. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to book that flight and I'm going to go out and I'm going to learn to surf. I'm going to go to Bali and I'm going to have the best time in my life and I'm going to get more sunburn than Kyle has ever dreamt of becoming. <laughs> so now what? You're there. You're in Bali. You took these photos. It's awesome. You found some surfers. Surfers are cool people. You got a long lens. You were prepared. You took some sweet photos of some surfers. 
So now, what do you do? Well, step three, output turns effort into reward. Suddenly, you've got the output. You've got a photo. You've got something you can brag about, right? There's a photo and there's a brand in the photo. Now you can turn that into a reward. Whether it's, I don't know, whether it's you want to get better at photography, you have the reward of being better. You have a new skill. You have a new something to show off. Or you want the likes on Instagram. Why not? We all do. We all do. I won't judge. (laughs) I won't judge. Or you want the monetary gain, right? You go to the brand, you show them the photo, and you say, hey, this is what I can do for you. And the brand says, that's fucking dope. We want more of that. So they pay you and you give them more of that. That is the value of habit. Suddenly that motivation that you had, that inspiration that you found while you're looking at Instagram turns in to a product that you can get rewards from. This is where habit comes into play. And this is the final point and I think is one of the most important. I'm going to put this here. You have to surround yourself with people more productive than you. Otherwise, you're going to stop. You're going to plateau. And you're going to have a hard time getting better at whatever it is you're doing. And that's why I put this image here of Martin Sohagen. If you've ever heard of Martin Sohagen, he is a boss. He's the man. He's a good, good dude. All throughout college, he made vlogs. He was making vlogs every day for like 250 days or something, something ridiculous. You know how hard it is to make a movie every single day? That's ridiculous. And Martin called me up and he said, Kyle, you know what? Let's go skiing. I said, okay, cool. Where are we going? He's like, it's Easter. We're going to Hempstead all. I said, fuck, okay. Easter at Hempstead all means party, drunk. Uh, Okay. But you know what? He's a productive person. I know he's a productive person. I know he loves to film and I know he loves to create content. So he said, yes, under the understanding that he's going to push me to get up early and go out and earn it. He had never ski toured before. He had never tried it before. So he borrowed some skis from Rosignal. And we went up. We went up. We woke up at like 7 in the morning, 6 or 7 in the morning. We got the skis together. We hiked up a mountain. It was awesome. This is us having a good time. Look at that. Two good friends doing cool shit together, seeing new views. We hiked up a mountain on the other side of the valley from Hempstead. Hempstead is a ski resort in Norway, if you don't know, and it's renowned for partying at Easter. So while everybody else was still asleep, we made it to the top of this mountain because we are in the habit of pushing each other and pushing ourselves. And I wouldn't have done it if he didn't ask. And that's just it. And then he was in the habit of turning these situations into, sorry about that, guys. He was in the habit of turning these situations into very productive environments. So what he did is he borrowed a car from Jaguar. And he said, Jaguar, you know what? We're going to get you some awesome photos. It's going to be sweet. And guess what? We got awesome photos. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. How about that, huh? Beautiful photo. This was taken in about five minutes after we were done skiing. That's it. Just like five minutes. We finished. We put all our gear in the car. We took everything off. We were going to drive back to the cabin. It was about one o'clock or so. And we took these photos. And then we sent them to Jaguar afterwards. First, I'll finish the story. So we got back to the cabin. We took off our boots. We walked through the sticky, nasty floor where people were spilling beer the night before. And people were still in their underwear at about one o'clock, making eggs, making breakfast, just preparing to go outside. And we had already had the adventure of the week. We were so proud of ourselves because we pushed each other. We were hanging out with people more productive than each other with better habits. And we pushed each other to grow because of that. So we got these awesome photos. We sent them to Jaguar. Jaguar said, these are dope. And I ended up getting a meeting with Jaguar. And because I love cars and I love shooting cars, this is something that I use to sort of propel my career and to meet new clients, to meet new people and just sort of practice and get better. And it's all because he's in the habit of pushing himself. So I let him push me for a bit. And I hope I pushed him too. And speaking of that, later, another friend of mine offered me the opportunity to come down and shoot in Guatemala for his villa, his family's villa. They needed new photos. And it's a week in Guatemala. It was dope. It was awesome. And I said, you know what? We need some video too. And the first person I called was Martin because I know Martin's in the habit of pushing himself. So I'll be in the habit of pushing Martin. I said, Martin, we're going to go down. And we're going to shoot some sweet photos. We're going to spend a week in Guatemala. And that's what we did. We woke up before the sun rose. We shot all day until sunset. And then we slept and we got out and we shot some more. It was awesome. It was the most productive week I'd ever had. It was fantastic. And it's all because we are in good habits 
of pushing each other. And we managed to get some really cheesy social media content. <laughs> Look at this photo. This is ridiculous. These are funny photos. I forgot how fun this was. Roger says in the chat, on that last point of yours, I think we need to go shoot some nature or more car stuff this summer. And you know what, Roger? I think you're right. I think you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happening right before your very eyes. This is it. This is it. If you're in the habit of saying yes to opportunities like this, your skills grow. You get better and other people get better at pushing themselves. So Roger, you know what? I'm taking you up on that. We are going to go adventure and we are going to find some sweet cars and we're going to go shoot some awesome, awesome stuff. And from there, I'm going to introduce you to the most boring slide or second most boring slide on the entire presentation. Creating magic. I'm going to skip that one real fast. Get some water because I am dying of thirst. It is very hot today. I'm going to bore you a little bit with some gear talk, with some technique talk. Ever says, hell yeah, let's do it. You know what, Ever? I'm in. Let's do it. Whatever it is. He didn't even offer anything in particular. He just said, hell yeah, let's do it. I'm in. We're doing it. You and me, Ever. <laughs> so when it comes to making magic and shooting photos, step one is to know your gear. This is boring. But the first question anybody ever asks me when they see my action photography or whatever is, is my camera good enough? And you know what? The answer is yes. It is. It's not as good as Sony. <laughs> Once again, I am a Sony ambassador. This live stream is brought to you by Sony itself. Just have to put that out there. This is sponsored. L13N Leon says, just throwing it out there. Polestar 2 will be on the road this summer. And I am just going to throw this out there to you, Mr. L13N Leon. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I am a massive Polestar fan. Since the announcement of Polestar 1, I have been following the growth of the company. I am obsessed. So Polestar 2 will be on the road this summer. And guess what? I will be right behind it with the camera clicking. And if you have a connection there, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in a thousand percent, 100,000 percent, 1 million percent. I challenge you. I challenge you to dare me. Step two is which setting suit? Thank you, Leon. I will follow you back on IG. And if you are not following Leon on IG, Leon, drop your IG, get some followers. Let's do this. Which setting suit? You need to know which of these numbers are going to make sense to you. You need to know the relationship between shutter, between ISO, between aperture. And you know what? These are the only numbers you need to know. To become a good photographer, these are the only numbers you need to understand. You need to understand how they play with each other. Why do you need high shutter speed sometimes? Why do you need high ISO? Why do you need a high aperture? But you need to know why you're doing it in relation to the other one. Once you have that figured out, that's it. That is, you know, as much as we do, <laughs> as much as us who call ourselves professionals, you know it all. You're in. You need to know when to use extremes. When to go to aperture 1.4. When to go to an ISO 6400, right? You need to know when to go to extremes and how far you can push yourself and how good your camera is at handling all that. Sony, great at handling all that. By the way, just going to put it out there. Stream is sponsored by Sony. I am a Sony ambassador. Have to <laughs> have to drop these disclaimers. Eva says, yes, for sure. Whatever it is, killer times ahead. You know what? I'm pumped. I don't even know what it is. He said, let's do it. I am in. I said, let's do it. Killer times are ahead, Eber. Let's make it happen. And then you need to know which lenses work. If you have interchangeable lenses or you have a zoom lens or you have a lens that's fixed, you need to know what your lenses are good at. And there are general rules. Like you can shoot wide for landscape. You can shoot tight for action to sort of separate the athlete from the background. Or you can switch it up. Why not? Let's get creative. Whatever. Go for it. All you need to know is that growth is in the attempt. As long as you're making the attempts, you're going to learn and you're going to get better and you're going to know not what or what not to do. Then that last time, sorry, <laughs> it's been a long day. You're going to need, you're going to learn what not to do next time. You're going to learn what to do next time. You're going to learn what you want to learn. This is the weird thing. You don't know what you need to, or what it is you need to learn until you try it, until you figure out what doesn't work. And then you go on YouTube and you fill in the gaps and then you try it and you get better. This is the best part. You get better. So try it all. Try it all. Why not? Step two is to go outside. Go out. This is underrated. 
indoors is underrated. I know studio photography is dope. I agree. It's awesome. It's super fun. But there's nothing better than outside. It's the greatest. Go adventure. Seize the opportunities. For example, this photo here, this is from Iceland. This is a few years ago. Another photographer named Emil Soli. Fantastic photographer. Great dude. Super good dude. He called me up and he said, hey, I'm tired of shooting for customers all the time. What if we spent a week, no clients, and we just went to Iceland? And I said, you know what? Let's do it. I'm in 100%. He's more productive than me. I want to be productive. I agreed. Let's do it. So we booked a flight. We went out. We brought a tent from a little brand called Houseport, whom I work with, very near and dear to me. We slept in the tent. We spent all our money, all the hotel money we should have spent. We spent it on renting a Land Rover Defender, which is the car. If you are adventuring it and you aren't using a Land Rover Defender, you are missing the point. <laughs> no, all cars qualify. But the Land Rover, the white Land Rover is the key. It's key. It's important. So we rented one of those and we just drove around. We watched the Justin Bieber music video where he went to Iceland. We picked all the same spots and we went and saw it. And it was awesome. It was great. Step two is to take risks. Step two of step two. Point two is to take risks. Travel's expensive, but you know what? If you find a way to recoup the money that you spent on it, be in the habit of selling your photos, trying to figure it out. Maybe it's just for your own betterment. Maybe it's an investment in yourself. Go for it. And if you can't afford spending nights in hotels or Airbnbs, bring a tent, sleep outside. It won't hurt. Why not? Bring a tent, be prepared. And the third point here is to go up. Everything looks better from above. And I get it. You can launch the drone, but you know what? Drones are cheating and you should feel bad about yourself. <laughs> no, drones are great, but use your legs. Go up, go see something new. Even if it's just 10 extra vertical meters, 20, 30, that's not much. That's like two minutes of walking. Go up, see what it looks like. Bring a ladder if you have to. Just get above it and see what everything looks like from above because I promise you, you'll enjoy it more. So now comes the bulk this is the important part of the lecture. This is where things get creative and I get to explain my photography a little bit. But before we do that, I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to explain to you guys real quick. Once again, happy you're here. Ever says, bring a ladder. He seconds that opinion. Yes, all about it, Ever. Bring that ladder. It's worth it. <laughs> I'm going to get real for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, Corona times are upon us and I thank you for spending your time hanging out with me. Hopefully I'm distracting you a little bit from the difficulties of everyday life. Things are hectic right now. It is not easy to be a human being. And I know that. But you're here with me and we're distracted and we're talking about cool shit. I am a Sony Alpha ambassador. This is a sponsored stream by Sony Alpha themselves. Disclaimer, have to put that out there. It is out there. So shall we continue? Thank you for being here. Spread the word. Share it on Facebook. I'm going to be here for a little bit more. If you are in the chat, drop a line in the chat. If you are not in the chat, get in there and let's carry on. Now, when it comes to photography, it is nearly impossible to better yourself shooting photos of things that don't represent you. If you're not into fashion, it is so very difficult to just jump into that industry and try your hand at shooting fashion. So pick something that represents you. If you're into cars, start with cars. If you're into skiing, start with skiing. If you're into hiking and nature, start there. Start wherever you can and start with what you love. And here's a list of things that I love, things that are cool to me. I love food especially. <laughs> I love food especially, but you know what? I love hiking and I love adventure. And because of that, I get to shoot a lot of these opportunities with people like Hellsport. Once again, this was a sponsor shoot or a sponsor shoot. This was a paid commission shoot for a company Hellsport who makes tents and sleeping bags, the best in the business. We went up to Lofoten and we said, we're going to get the midnight sun. We're going to hike to a cool spot and we're going to wait for it. And it's going to be awesome. So we hiked and we hiked and we hiked and we waited and the moment the sun was supposed to just touch the horizon and then come back up, the clouds came and it blocked it. But we made the best of a bad situation. Bad situation. Look at this photo. That's not a bad situation. That's a great situation. <laughs> That's a situation I would pay a lot of money to be in right now. I tell you that. It was beautiful. And we got this blue hour haze under the midnight sun. This was taken at about midnight. It was fantastic. It was awesome. Two miles just hanging out 
enjoying, doing what they would do naturally, nothing fake. We would just chill, watch the stars. I don't know. There's a certain authenticity that's fantastic. Mr. Petter Hermans, he was there, ladies and gentlemen. He is the man, the myth, the legend. He is the cameraman extraordinaire. Mr. Petter Hermans is in the chat. Beautiful human being. Thank you for being here, Petter. Let me know how your day is going. And we took this photo in the blue hour. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with the blue hour. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. And blue gives this tranquil vibe, right? This calming vibe. This vibe of everything is okay. It's breathable. Blue is not a very harsh color. It's very soft and it's very easy on the eyes. So I, I, I thought it was beautiful. It was a fantastic moment. And guess what? It represents me and it represents things that I enjoy, including hiking. So once again, we went up. We got a good view. I got a little bit more elevation than them. I shot down so I could get them under the horizon, kind of protected by all the mountains. And we told the story of them just giving up on the day, letting the night take them, and that was the end of it. And then there's this shot, the complete opposite, right? We're lifting the model up above the horizon. This is ML Soli. Once again, this is from our trip to Iceland. Fantastic trip. If you've never been to Iceland, it's like cheating. It's beautiful. Fantastic. And we just pulled the car over. One, I love cars. Two, I love adventure. Represents me perfectly. So I knew exactly where to be. I knew what angle would work best. I knew that it looked cooler if the mountains were to the side and the sunset was on the, the point through the photo. It was just natural to me because I've seen it all a million times before. So it was a beautiful opportunity to sort of capture this very, very warm evening light. Petter, Petter says, editing as always. So used to hearing you in the background, so this was perfect. Yes, <laughs> I'm happy you are here, Petter. I am happy I can help the editing process. Ever says, would take the photos with or without collab anyways. This is true. This is true. This is what makes you a photographer. This is the goal. We want to shoot because we love shooting. We don't want to shoot because we're told to. This is the goal. This is what we're here for. Ever also says, damn, good photo, man. I appreciate that, Ever. That's very, very nice of you. Speaking of which... Kayaking, kayaking's beautiful, right? It's an awesome opportunity to adventure at a plane at sea level. Sea level, you don't have to go up. I know I said it before, but it's not really possible with kayaking, so it doesn't really apply now. It was beautiful. It was a very calm sea. And this was a shoot for Bixit, the cookie company. It's fantastic. It was a fun shoot. We drove all around Norway and we saw tons of cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff. Things that I wasn't really prepared for. But it was beautiful. And we ended up finding this moment where the sun had dipped a little bit below the mountains. So you only get like a hint of sun. It feels very tranquil, very calm. He's not going 100% at the paddling. He's just sort of floating there and enjoying the moment to himself. And he's protected by this valley in this fjord all by himself. Just taking in the moment and enjoying beautiful photo. I really like it. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm the one who took it, so I'm allowed to say that. So we were chilling. This, I was uh, shooting from shore. I was a little bit higher than him, so I could shoot down. I could put him below the horizon. That needs to be put on a billboard. You know what? I agree. I need to buy a billboard. <laughs> and I ended up getting this moment where you could just take a breath in between paddling. It doesn't need to be stressful. He doesn't need to be going 100%. He doesn't need to be going full blast. He just needs to be going and that's it. Just a guy reflecting on what's going on in his life. And then the complete opposite. We are hiking. This is for the same brand, by the way. This is the same shoot. This is in Hempstead We were ice climbing. And ice climbing is such a scary sport. It's so dramatic. You're so high up and you're trusting that this frozen water, which is usually a liquid, but is now a solid, somehow you just have to trust it. I know, science, right? <laughs> and they're going 100% at this wall of ice, this super slippery stuff that really doesn't want you to climb it, but they're doing it anyway. It's really snowy and everything's really heavy and there's a lot of drama and the spikes and the pointiness of all the icicles and they're wearing bright orange and it's really flexed and tense and it's a very stressful situation. But if you really put yourself in this situation, really think about it. It's perfectly quiet. The snow muffles all the noise. The blue is very tranquil. It's very calming. The only noise you can hear is when the ice axe goes as they're climbing up, and that's it. 
that's it. And that's kind of the juxtaposition. That's kind of what I wanted to tell. And to tell that story, I used a long lens. I used a 70 to 200. That sort of gives height to everything. It means I can back up. I can get to the same level. So I'm not looking up the waterfall. And it gives more snow between me and the models, which creates more of like a dramatic feel. And that's where this photo came from. Once again, adventure. It's something that represents me very well. So why not shoot more photos of it? So on to the next one. Cars. I told you it was coming. I warned you. I warned you. It's not all about adventure. Sometimes it's about the adventure tool. And cars. Cars are something I grew up loving. I grew up around cars. I love cars. I currently love cars. I was shooting cars today. <laughs> and Porsches, right? If we're talking history and cars and we're talking passion, we're talking air-cooled Porsches. So this guy has one of the most beautiful air-cooled Porsches in Oslo. Paul Du, <laughs> which means on the toilets is very talented man. You as well, multitasking, are a very talented human. I appreciate you being here. And please don't leave once you flush. I want you to stick around. So I reach out to people who have cool cars and I say, hey, I can offer you some awesome photos if you let me practice shooting your cars. This was one of those moments. And what more beautiful car than an Irish green? Or was it Irish green? Oak green. Some sort of green. Porsche 911 SC. Air-cooled from the late 70s, I think. Once again, it's something I'm passionate about. I understand how cars work. I understand that the paint is reflective. I understand that the wheels are focused because they're Fuchs and they tell the story of Porsche. It's something that I know, so it's I know how to highlight it and make it look good. And it's something that I really love practicing. So I do more of it. I do it as much as possible. That's what I'm trying to recommend here. Do it as much as possible. And I go now to my own car. I have a car. We all have a car. It might not be the most exciting car. It might not be the most beautiful car, but fuck it. Go out and shoot. It's a car all the same. Hopefully I'm not blocking a photo. No, I am not. Perfect. As long as you're just learning the principles and practicing and flexing your muscles here and there, you're going to get better at it. And the way you get better at it is by just putting yourself in situations where you can do more of it. So with this, I was teaching myself to light paint. I can light paint, but I'm not great at it. So I built a little rig myself with some continuous lights and I went up on top of this rooftop and I taught myself to light paint. I did it more and more and more. This photo I think is about five or six photos stacked on top of each other. And hey, I got better at it because I went out and did it. It was midnight, it was super late. I went out when it was dark, took the photos by myself, perfectly silent, no help. I just wanted to go out and get better at it. And the way you get better at it is by doing it. And I did something I know, which is car photography. On an unrelated note, skiing. <laughs> I love skiing. Skiing's great. I've been skiing all my life. My mother's Norwegian. It's something I was born with. This is Anders Baca. Anders Baca, very talented skier. This was not the greatest conditions. This photo is a little bit forced, but I wanted to learn how to shoot skiing in darkness with unnatural light. So what I did is I brought two flashes. I borrowed one flash. I had a flash of my own. I set them up. I had one flash here to the right, and I had one flash here to the left to backlight everything and give some drama to the trees, get some detail in the darkness. And I hit them with the flash. Got a good turn, got a good spot, and I learned a new skill. And I learned it because I know skiing. It's something that represents me very well, and I shot it because of that. And we shot tons together. That same night, we went and we hit a big jump. We tried some new techniques just to see if I could do them. This photo is two photos put together. One photo is the hard flash of him in the air grabbing the tail. And then the second photo is him doing the exact same trick, but with no flashes and no light. And I left it on long exposure. And that's why you have this long trail going from the takeoff to the landing. That's the long exposure mixed in with the single burst. And this is a trick that I wanted to learn. And because I know skiing so well, I wasn't distracted by the photography. I wasn't distracted by trying to learn the new technique. I knew when to take the photo. I knew where he was going to be at the top of his 360. I've seen him ski before. I know his style. I know the way he caps his tail grabs and when he's in the air. So I said, let's do this trick. Let's really focus on it. Let's get a good picture. Which meant I didn't have to focus on getting the skiing perfect. I could focus on learning a new skill, which is perfect. 
And because we are in the habit of pushing each other and going out and taking these photos, we ended up connecting with a company, Mitsubishi, the car company. And we took some photos of his car because he gets a truck from them that he gets to borrow, which is awesome. And we went out and we shot some photos of the truck and it was fun. It was beautiful. It was a fantastic day. Super, super nice day. Very, very warm, calm weather. And we brought skis because that represents him perfectly. And we wanted to tell the story of him using the truck as a way to go skiing. So we took some photos. We took a few. We took this. We took this from inside the cabin, something kind of different. Once again, I know skiing. I know cars. I know how naturally to carry your skis on your shoulders. So that wasn't an issue. Direction wasn't an issue. I could fo focus on new techniques. No technique, interior car photography. I'm not that good at it. So I wanted a chance to practice it. And this was a good opportunity to practice it. And we sent the photos to Mitsubishi and they were so happy. They called me in for a meeting and we ended up arranging a shoot, a full on commercial paid shoot. And that's what we got from that shoot, which was during the winter. It was fantastic. It was awesome. We got some cool photos. So this is what I was talking about before, right? This is habit. This is habit turning into output, turning into reward. This is you doing something because you love it. You doing it because it represents you and you doing it with the stuff that represents you and the people who are more productive than you to push you. And then it turns into a reward. And now I have a new client whom I was shooting with today for that matter. These are from another day. We were shooting studio photos. It's very hard to practice studio photography. I know it's very difficult because it's hard to get a your hands on a studio that's five meters long can house a truck, but they needed some of the photos. So I got to practice it because I put myself in situations where this would arise and they needed them. So lo and behold, it grew and grew and grew and turned into them becoming my client and me getting to try new things with them as a client. And now they trust me and I trust them and we can sort of build off of each other until we built a style that represents both of us and it looks beautiful and it's fantastic. And that's all because I created this habit of saying yes to these shoots and going out and shooting cars, for example, and skiing. They combined it, combined it, combined. I forgot English for a little bit to make this beautiful relationship and a new client and a new host of clients that are car based. It's perfect. It's perfect for me. And it's all because I shot something that I loved. I'm going to take another drink of water. Once again, it's very hot and I spent the whole day outside and I am dying of thirst. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, my name is Kyle Meyer. If you didn't know my name, I wonder how you found me. <laughs> and the only way I'm going to know is if you drop it in the chat, join the chat, tell me what's going on in your life, share some stories. There are some other awesome, really awesome people there. We're sharing a conversation. I am responding to every single message. I am reading as I am going. This stream, once again, is brought to you by Sony Alpha. I am a Sony Alpha amb ambassador. Just want to put that out there, let you know I believe in the company. They believe in me. The trust is mutual. From there, I want to talk a little bit about finding a subject to shoot. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. You can't just go out and shoot whatever you want and expect it to sort of grow into something bigger unless you're a fine art photographer who's killing it, in which case, that's awesome. Good for you. You're living the dream. <laughs> But if you want to learn how to tell a story, you need to find the stories. You need to create the stories. And one of the stories that I had one of the, uh, I had the most fun shooting was the story of a friend of mine named Tom Eric Rain who thought he could break the world record for longest manual on a skateboard. My Lord, if you've ever tried to manual on a skateboard, it is impossible. The idea is to get the board on two wheels and to balance there for as long as possible. I can only do it for about 10 meters. <laughs> he did it. For two and a half kilometers. My lord, that's ridiculous. That is insane. Mm. More about the story. I will switch to this photo while I tell this story. He is Norwegian. He lives in LA. He is Hollywood living. He called me up and said, hey, I have this idea. I found a road. We're going to go try to break a world record. And I said, you know what? I'm in. Let's do it. Cool opportunity for an awesome trip hang out with some cool people, go see some cool things and shoot a cool story. So I got to document the story of him going out to Death Valley and trying to break this world record. We spent a few days just driving back and forth up this road, trying to break the record over and over and over. And one of the places we found on the way was this, this beautiful view 
of a winding road that goes down into Death Valley. One of the most gnarly places on earth. Super hot, super ridiculously unwelcoming. And that's kind of what I wanted to tell with the story is that he was having fun in a very unfun environment. He managed to skate his way out of the valley. You can tell it's a crazy deep valley by a little bit of snow here on the mountains in the back and all the empty, dried up lake bed there in the bottom. I wanted the idea of him skating away from that, of him just carefree right in the middle of the road, nothing holding him to the earth but the skateboard. That's it. And I got that. And I got him to pop because he wore red. So he stands out from the road. There's a lot more focus on the model. And that's the story I wanted to tell with this photo. So the story continues. A few more people came with us, including Marin. Marin, fantastic Instagram uh, accounts. A lot of ass on that account. <laughs> She's known for workouts and she's known for doing fantastic workouts and selling workout programs. And this is something that people come to follow her for. Um, so Marin Turmo was joining the trip and she was there for motivational inspiration and just to sort of be around more productive people than herself, which is why we were all there. And it's the point of the trip. You get other people to push you into doing cooler things. So she was filming routines and was there for motivational supports while Tom was trying to break this record. And I need to practice my portrait photography. So we found a cool spot, cool colors. And I said, you know what? Let's see what we can get. Let's do it. And she shared the photos on Instagram. I managed to get photos and get better and learn a bit about different colors and the way lights, natural light works at a certain level. So I got better. She enjoyed it. She got something out of it. And here's Tom skating. This was shot on the Sony RX10 Mark IV at 600 millimeters, super long. Just a dude carefree skating his way into Death Valley. Fantastically beautiful location. Once again, ultra carefree in a place where you probably shouldn't be carefree. <laughs> that's kind of the story. And I think that's what's beautiful about it. When you shoot it with a super long lens, you compress the backdrop. This is about 10 kilometer, maybe stretch of road. Very long, straight stretch of road. And when you shoot that long of a lens, you can drag everything in. So it creates this inception kind of effect. Eric, that is the same face I made when I found the road. Exact same face. I look just like that. Something like this. Something like that. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was fantastic. So we ended up getting this. This is part of the story, right? This is us. Roger says, damn, that compression. Yes, 600 millimeters will do that to you. It's not an easy thing to shoot, by the way. If you've ever used a lens of 600 millimeters, that's a pain in the ass. But we pulled it off, and I think we got a very cool shot. We got him just dominating, owning this road, owning this lifestyle, just doing what he does best. And I think it's beautiful because of that. So now, back to the story. This is the road that we used. This is the road that he broke the world record on. And you'll recognize it if you ever go there because it says world record and spray paint on the side of the road. And how cool is that? <laughs> This is the moment that he broke it. He landed, put the wheels down, skated back up to where we were, and he was so stoked. And in this moment, you get the most authentic reactions possible. There's no faking. There's no falsehood. This is purely authentic. This is Maria greeting him after he broke the world record, arms up in the air, celebrating 100%. And also, later in that trip, we went to Venice, we took one of the mandatory Venice skateboarding shots. Once again, people more productive than me. I put myself in this situation where I could choose this photo of him skating past the camera. Nothing difficult, just skating. But we timed it perfectly where the sun was just under him. We defined that carefree California lifestyle in this one photo. And because we did that, Sony liked it so much. They printed it two meters tall and put it in the storefront of photo.no. And that's fantastic. Once again... That is motivation, inspiration, creativity, and good habits coming together to make output and a product. And not just a product, but a reward for the product. Beautiful. Fantastic. That's what I was talking about in the beginning, and this is the pure embodiment of it. So now I want to go a little bit more into storytelling. I want to talk about giving character to the landscape and using characters and friends and family to do this. And using shapes and using objects, just finding characters wherever you can. Oh, so thirsty. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's hot out there. Drink water. Drink water. It's key. Woo. So let's go back and let's dissect this photo a little bit. Once again, this was shot with Hellsport, the brand. We were in Randana National Park. Please let me know in the chat how badly I butchered that name. It is Norway's oldest national park. It looks like the moon. It is crazy. There are no trees. It is barren. It is dramatic weather. It's crazy. But we managed to find a day where it was beautiful sunset, super soft. So when we got there, we ran out of the car. We found our spot and we pitched the tents. And you know what? It was awesome. Because the tents happened to match the shape of the mountain in the back. Like perfectly. And in that sense, we could tie the tents to nature almost directly. They look like an extension of nature. They look like just an extra part of nature, an extra part of the landscape of the skyline. And then we added, we gave everybody a job to do. Everybody had a job to do, right? He was thirsty. They were still setting up their tent. She's focused on getting her boots or whatever in order. There's always something to do. So it's not just models standing around. You give them a purpose. And because they have a purpose, they have a character within the landscape. And that's what I was trying to do. And from there, I go back to Guatemala, the place I was talking about before. This is a small town, very, very small town in Guatemala. There's not much going on here. But these kids managed to make their own kites. They managed to make their own kites out of trash bags and string, and they caught the wind, and they're flying them, and they're having the best time. In a place that really doesn't have as much as we're lucky enough to be able to afford. And to me, that story was fantastic. These kids making the most of a situation that they grew up with, that they're used to. This is, this is what they do. This is where they find their enjoyment. And to see that joy on their face, that smile. This kid got his kite stuck in the wire. <laughs> he got it stuck. That's never coming down. That's gone. But still having the best time of his life while he's doing it. I wanted to capture that joy. I wanted to get them above the city. I was lucky enough that I could get above the city. I could shoot them on the rooftops, just above all of it, with a lake and the volcano in the background, just enjoying life in the purest manner. That's what I want. I need a lot of sky in the photo so I could show that it was very carefree, that it was very breathable, that the air was fantastic, the views were great. And by getting the sky and the floaty clouds, I could tell all that story. But then with the orange tin roofs, you can tell how hot it is. You get all these elements that come together to tell a full story. And that's what I was trying to get out of that photo. And then there comes the idea of moving while taking the photos. Usually one angle isn't enough. You have to keep moving because if you're not moving, you're not going to find anything new. And then you just end up a thousand photos of the same angle, the same photo a thousand times. And nobody wants that. What's the point? This photo to the left is from the tourist spot. It's from where everybody, here, I'm going to move this a little bit. It's from where everybody parks when they come and want to see this waterfall. This is Voting Falls. It's a beautiful waterfall. It's fantastic. If you've ever been there, you know it's massive. There's a lot of power. It's crazy. And this photo to the left, this is the view from the top of the waterfall. This is the most common view. This is what everybody else sees when they go there. That wasn't enough. I wanted more. I wanted to go down to the bottom. I wanted to hike in all the way here to the bottom, and I wanted to put a human here at the bottom to give the waterfall scale, to make the waterfall grow, right? And because I put the human below the horizon, I gave height to the waterfall, and I gave it more power, and I put the human I did below that, and I gave them less power, and I sort of created this dynamic between, between, between man and nature, that you couldn't really get from above the waterfall. You don't really get that power. It's just not there. And that's something I wanted to touch up on. And I want to explain that again with these three photos. Putting humans below the horizon, it gives more power to the nature. And when you give more power to the nature, you give either the idea that they're protected by the nature or that the nature is dominating over them and that the nature is just reminding them that they're stronger and that the human is just a small part of this world. And with the middle photo, you really get that. You get this massive mountain that's looming over Julia. Eric says, finally some snow. I knew you were waiting for it. I knew it. It is here. Guess what? Snow. You get the nature dominating and just being this ultra-powerful force that we're just a part of. And that's what I wanted to tell. 
Whereas this photo on the right, you get the opposite idea, that it almost feels protected, that a human has the their place in nature and that they're just enjoying it. This is the same woman, this is Julia Cornelius, and also fantastic human on a massive trip right now, documenting it on Instagram. I highly recommend you go follow her. It's gonna be a fantastic trip, and she's amazing at taking photos and telling stories. It's gonna be great. But this photo here to the right sort of quiets nature, even though you have the same composition, it, it, it gives a certain quietness and a certain ownership of her to nature, but it also creates this protective feeling. And I, I, I like that about the photo. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the dominating feeling where you put the human above the horizon. Once again, you've seen this photo before. You get the human owning nature in that there's some sort of, uh, Ivar says, Sony just makes the perfect sons. Hey, you know what? I agree. <laughs> I agree. And once again, that's a good opportunity for me to let you know that this stream is sponsored by Sony Alpha. I am a Sony Alpha ambassador. I am here because of them. I believe in them and they believe in me. So these photos give you the opposite vibe, right? These put humans above nature. It creates a sort of power. It creates an ownership of mankind over nature. We dominate. This is us enjoying our playground. It is our playground. We are not the subjects here. It is the subject for us. And you get that by creating this vibe by putting the human above the horizon. Although I'm still pretty scared of nature when I see this photo on the bottom left. As Prike is stolen. Fun fact, I'll tell you a little bit more later. You know what? I'll tell you a bit more of it later. If you want to hear the fun facts about Prike is stolen, I will tell you at the end. It's beautiful, fun fact, and there's going to be some awesome photos. Just hang in there. And this photo is to remind you that character doesn't always need to come from a human. You don't always need a human in the photo to define the character of the photo or to tell the story. Sometimes the character can come from a tent or any sort of object for that matter. The tent here in this photo is creating a home within nature. It's creating a home that's working along with nature. And you get this passing of time with the clouds that are moving because it's a long exposure. You get the river moving that creates a softness to the photo. It's not so harsh. You don't get the peaks of the waves. You get a rounder effect. And that roundness sort of calms the viewer. That's what I wanted with this photo. Once again, you don't need a human to give character to a photo. The character doesn't always have to have a face, doesn't always have to have legs and be able to talk. Sometimes the cabin does all the talking. For example, this once again is in Randana, Norway's oldest national park. This is a park that has no protection. There's no trees. When it's windy, it's windy everywhere. When it rains, it rains everywhere. When it's sunny, it's sunny everywhere. It is brutal. When it snows, everything gets covered. It is a brutal landscape. And what I wanted to tell is just one morning, one morning among the whole year of just dramatic weather, this cabin gets this opportunity to just drop its shoulders and relax. That's what I wanted from this photo. That's the character I wanted to show. And that's the story I wanted to tell with the character. And I think it came out pretty good. And with the framing in the bottom of the plants covering the bottom of the photo here. Not only do you get the viewer's eyes to go up more towards the middle of the photo, you also get the feeling that I am not dominating, that I am sort of within the nature, that the camera is just sort of spectating and not a part of the story. And to sort of bring yourself out of the story is such a valuable aspect when it comes to photography. You don't always have to be a part of the story. It doesn't always need to be all selfies and I was here and I did this. Sometimes it's just about what was out there already. And sometimes it is about you. <laughs> but here's the thing, you don't always have to have just straight focus on the personality. Sometimes you can use a character in so many different ways to tell a story of the landscape. For one, this photo here, the horizontal one, skiing in Strian. This is summer skiing. I wanted to show that, I wanted to use a wide lens so I could show what's going on. You give a little bit more character to the landscape that way. You sort of tell the story of where the skier's coming from and where he's going. And then you have the skier himself just tearing through the landscape and adding drama and adding so much story here. And without that, you would just have kind of a bland landscape. So here the character is adding so much drama and it's at really adding the, the story. Whereas the character, once again, with a kayaking photo to the left, 
is calming the whole nature down. You have the nature that's dominating and it's super dramatic. You have the harsh sun, backlit, everything. That's the dramatic part of the photo. But the human is just sort of the quiet part. It's the part that's bringing you back down to earth and reminding you that it doesn't need to be so action-packed and dramatic. And that's what I want to get by adding humans to the photo. Now I use these photos as a cautionary tale with light. Sometimes patience pays off. Oh my God. Oh, I've run out of water. I don't know how I'm going to survive the rest of this. <laughs> I want to tell this. This is before a sunrise. This is maybe 10 minutes before the sun came over the horizon. They had just woken up, just started maybe boiling water for whatever it is they were about to drink or do or eat for breakfast. This is a moment where you're just sort of reminding yourself where you are. You're coming to bearings, you're getting your bearings, and you're coming to terms with what's going on in your life. And with that, there's not so much excitement. But when you wait 10 minutes for the sun to come around, you have this, the exact same spot, the exact same situation, but such a different atmosphere. And the story you're telling between the two, between this and this, is miles, miles apart. And that's because you're in the frame of mind of knowing where the sun is going to be at which times and knowing what's going on and really understanding nature because it's something that you love and it's something that you're comfortable shooting. Or it's something that I'm comfortable shooting. I I hope everybody else here is into nature as much as I am. <laughs> and once again, I'm happy to have you here. If you're not in the chat, get in the chat. Let me know what's going on in your life. I want to hear. I'm answering everything that you post there. So here you finally have some momentum. You have some smoke or some steam coming from the boiling water. You have more of a story there. You have the story of them talking to each other uh, each other, versus the one before where they're not talking to each other. You have so much more going on in this and it's because you know what's going on and you know where things are going to be and you understand. You understand nature because it's something that you love. And that's, I guess, the value of the photos, right? Of the photos. And in terms of light changing and the story changing with it, this next photo is the same spot turning the other way, focused at a different time of day. And you tell, once again, a completely different story. Three different stories from the same exact spot. All that changed was the light. That's it. You change the compensation, or compensation. You change the composition a little bit in that you move the characters around. But they're still right next to each other. They're still doing more or less the same thing, hanging out in their sleeping bags, sitting there, enjoying the environment. But when the environment changes you get a completely different story. And with that, you get a completely different set of photos that you can use for completely different purposes. And I think that's fantastic. Roger says, yeah, need to explore more at nature this summer, getting bored of architecture photos. Roger, I agree. Whenever you want to explore, let me know and let's go. Let's go adventure. Let's go see some cool shit. <laughs> and here's the last point I'm going to make. The last point I'm going to make in this presentation is that you have to push yourself. You have to push yourself. If you're not out there shooting, you're never going to learn. If you're not shooting, you're never going to learn what it is you need to learn, what it is you're missing in your skill set, what it is you want to get better at in your skill set, what it is that drives you. If you're not pushing yourself to practice these things and you're not pushing yourself to try new things and new situations like this photo shot in super heavy rain, we could have easily chose not to go outside. And not to risk getting the camera wet and getting the clothes wet and having to dry everything off and change clothes and, oh my God, all that hassle. Or we could have gone out and tried it and just found out what works. And you know what does work? Bright colors on a dark backdrop. When it rains heavy, you get a faded, hazy backdrop. You don't get all the clarity. And you get the rivers a little bit more dramatic. You get the shininess in all the materials, right? The rocks are more shiny. There's more highlights in the ground. You get all this new drama that you just never learned how to deal with otherwise. So that comes from pushing yourself, from really pushing yourself to learn how to use your camera. This is a completely different situation. This was shot at a carnival in, uh, in the Netherlands. Cool carnival, lots of colors, lots of action, lots of bright stuff going on. I thought it was pretty cool. And one thing I really wanted to try doing was shooting really steady shots by hand. Shooting handheld is one of the hardest things to do. And what I wanted to accomplish was to learn how to shoot. And if I can shoot 
for one whole second by hand. And that's what I did with his right photo, this photo to the right. That is a one second exposure, one second long shot by hand. And with the help of Sony's five axis image stabilization, <laughs> I'm just gonna drop little ads in here and there. Why not? Once again, sponsored by Sony, this whole stream. Just gonna get that out there. I managed to do it, I managed to pull it off. It took me a lot of effort, a lot of practice, a lot of tries, but now I know I can shoot handheld for a really long time. So if light gets really low, and I don't have a tripod, I hate using tripods by the way, then I can do it. I can do it. And I know that because I push myself to go out there and try it. Not that I push myself to go experience this beautiful, awesome, super fun carnival, but I push myself to bring my camera to a situation that maybe is the most comfortable place to have a camera. And with this photo, I wanna tell that same story. This is me going up, skiing, in a very non-ski friendly environment. <laughs> There's not really enough snow to go skiing here. There's not enough snow to enjoy the skiing. But you know what we did anyway? We enjoyed it, we had a good time. We brought the camera, it was about, I think late November or early December, so the light was low. It took about three hours to drive there. This is Gaustatoppen, about three hours, one of the biggest mountains just outside of Norway, or just outside of Oslo, sorry. We knew the view was gonna be good. We knew the weather was gonna be good. Eric says, which camera do you recommend for action shots and filming? Eric, I can get to that at the end, but there is no wrong choice. I do recommend full frame though, but I can get to that at the end. I have two more slides left and I will talk a little bit more about tech. And fun fact, I'm just gonna plug it right now. On Thursday, I'm going to be talking about technology and Sony technology with the Sony representative, Lars. Kvaloi, he is the man. He's going to be hanging out with me here in this spot on Thursday. So check in on Thursday, same time, 7 o'clock. We're going to be talking about technical aspects of photography and some of the equipment and our favorite equipment. But if you hang out till the end, two more slides. I will talk to you a little bit more about that. The weather here was windy. It was minus 13. It was very cold. It was brutal. It was brutal. My Lord, but hey. We're in the habit of pushing ourselves and getting better and learning more about what it is we do and we love doing. And what we love doing is photography and skiing and adventures. So we've got in the car, drove from about six-ish in the morning, five or six in the morning, got there before lights. We hiked up the mountain. That's about 1,880 vertical meter. I think it's about 900 vertical meters from where you park. That's a brutal hike, damn. We hiked up. We managed to get this awesome sunset, cool photos. And there's a video on my YouTube page, actually that documents the whole trip and you can see how much fun we had it once this live stream is over, not too long. Go over there, check out the video, drop a comment, let me know what you think. And we got these cool photos. I think it was fantastic. Even though the snow wasn't perfect, even though you're not jealous of the skiing looking in the photos, it's just a chance to learn something new and to push ourselves, why not? And now I'm gonna show you one of my most recent trips. This was to Prekestolen. Prekestolen is perhaps Norway's largest landmark. This is one of the most popular places for tourists to come visit in Norway. But thanks to Corona, there are no tourists. It is empty. So I said, you know what? This was the day that they lifted the travel ban within Norway, by the way, so it was legal. Don't worry about it. I got my tent, I got in the car, I drove the eight hours from Oslo to go see Prekestolen. I'd never seen it before because I never wanted to. There was always thousands of tourists up there. It's this massive platform that's about 600 vertical meters over straight down to the fjord. It's super gnarly. It's super scary. It's very unsafe and it makes some of the coolest photos that I've ever taken. And I packed up the car, I left, I did the eight hour drive. Laura says, holy cow, that middle photo. Yeah, look at that tree. <laughs> I could talk about that tree in a second. Ridiculous. I brought just a tent, just myself. I brought a book that I could read when I was trying to kill time. And I went there and I hiked up and I was the only one. I was all alone walking around on Norway's most popular landmark. And I pushed myself and I said, you know what? I'm going to go up there. I'm going to see this. I'm going to see this. It's going to be awesome. And because I did that, I got some of the most unique photos that... I think are possible to get a Prekestolen. And that's with it with only one person during the middle of the day down here in the bottom left. 
or in the morning sunrise because I brought the tent and I pushed myself to sleep up there. Eva says, I was there right after you. Didn't have that weather though. Eva, you missed it by a day. You missed it. But how beautiful was it? How beautiful was it? It must have been fantastic. It's crazy when there's nobody up there, isn't it? It's a surreal experience. I set my timer, my timer. I set my alarm clock to midnight so I could wake up and get the stars. And I woke up and there were millions of stars, not one cloud in the sky. It was beautiful. Eva, I bet you got a damn good photo. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. And I'm stoked to see it. I'm stoked to see what you got. And before I took any photos at midnight, I walked down to the platform, which was lit up by stars. Amazing, amazing moment. And I was by myself on top of what is one of the most breathtaking scenes I had ever seen. All by myself, not a human for miles. And I just walked around and I explored and I saw this crazy, crazy experience that nobody else gets to see because there's so many tourists. So capitalize on these moments. Capitalize on these moments now where you know things are going to be more um, empty, where you know Corona is making it a little bit more difficult to travel. And maybe there's more hesitancy because of the situation. Maybe it's not such a fun time to go travel, but put yourself, bring your camera, push yourself and go make it happen. Drive the eight hours to go see it. Bring a tent, go sleep up there hang out and then drive the eight hours back the next day so you can come home and edit the photos. That's what I did. It was fantastic. I read a book. I listened to an audio book. I was productive. I got some of the coolest photos I'd ever gotten. And on the way back, I found this tree. <laughs> this tree in the middle of an island in the middle of this lake or this river. Just all by itself. My God, what an experience. I'd never seen anything like that before. So I pulled over the car got out of the car, shot the photo. Super stoked at how unique that photo is. Fantastic. Eva says, yet it was so beautiful. No one there. Yes. Said, yeah, the sun peaked out behind the clouds and lit up only the rock for like 10 seconds. Did you get that 10 seconds in a photo? Please tell me you got that. I'm stoked to see that. Eva, I'm pumped to see this photo. You better not disappoint me. <laughs> no, I'm pumped you're out there shooting. I'm so excited to see this photo, man. But that was the idea is just push yourself, go out and see these things, explore. The last point that I want to make with this presentation is to remind yourself, one, that it's not easy. We chose a very tough hobby. We chose a very tough hobby. It's expensive. It takes a lot of travel. It takes a lot of effort. You're in it alone. There's no one pushing you. This is something you have to push yourself to do. And you know what? I'm going to pause this terrible music just for one second. <laughs> and I'm going to go to the full screen mode because I think this warrants it. And you get to see my super sunburned forehead. Look at this. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's a tough hobby and it's an even tougher career. And it's a more expensive passion than most other people's. And I know it's easy to make excuses because of that. But you have to remind yourself that this is what you love doing. You're here for a reason. You're here because it's something that piqued your interest. It's something that not only piqued your interest, it stole your interest and it never gave it back. And you're never going to get it back, so why not give into it? Go out and shoot photos. Go out at night. Stay awake. Go shoot stuff where nobody else is looking adventure and find the things that you are passionate about and document them with photos. And with that, I want to thank you very, very, very much for being here. I've had a blast. I've had a blast chatting with you guys, explaining myself, explaining my photography. I'm going to be answering questions. I will be hanging around in the chat for another few minutes. I encourage you to get into the chat let me know what is going on in your life. Let me know how your day is going. Let me know how your life is going. Let me know how Corona has affected you. Let me know how you're going to kick Corona's ass and you're going to get out there and start accomplishing what you love doing. Roger very kindly pointed out that my forehead is blending in nicely with the background. And you know what, Roger? Thank you. <laughs> it's what we call a ginger tan. This is how gingers tan. It's what we do. 
I'm going to go back to Eric's question. Eric Vickberg, I hope I pronounced that correctly. If you are still here, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you asking the question, which camera do you recommend for action shots and filming? Sony's do-it-all camera right now is the A7R, no, it is the A7 III. This camera dominates. First and foremost, I highly recommend full frame. If you get an APS-C or a cropped camera, you're going to enjoy it and you're going to love the hell out of it. And it's going to be way, way nicer on your budget. But it is very hard to shoot with the same quality as you would get with a full frame camera. The sensitivity, the light sensitivity, just everything about it is more convenient. It, it, it really, really changes the way you look at photos and it opens up your world to a whole new way of shooting photos. It's an investment. Yes, I understand that, but it's an investment worth making. So I recommend going full frame. I'm going to start the music again. I know it's terrible music. It's copyright free, so deal with it. <laughs> I would recommend going full frame. And if you're looking to buy a new camera, I'd say the a7 III is a very, very good do-it-all camera that really, really can handle itself. If you want really dominant stills and you want the resolution, the a7R III is or the A7R4 more so, is just a monster. A monster. If you want a solid filming camera, the A7S II, maybe the A7S III at some point in our life. <laughs> you never know. I know as much as you do, so don't ask. Those are fantastic cameras with filming. And in terms of sensitivity, which is what the S stands for, they absolutely dominate in low light. So if you want to shoot some really, really fast, awesome stuff in low light, that's the one. But when it comes to the style, I suggest looking into the into different lenses. Lenses are everything. L lenses can define a photo so much. So I hope that answered your question, Eric. Sorry, I don't have more to say now. But once again, I remind you, on Thursday, I will be talking with Lars Cavalloy, who is still in the chat, I hope. Let me know, Lars drop a line, start a conversation. I'm going to be chatting with him. We're going to be talking about the technical aspect. We're going to talk about Sony cameras and Sony everything, and we're going to give you mad advice, and it's going to be super sick. So I will see you there, Eric. Thank you for dropping by and hanging out here. Once again, I am hanging out in the chat. If you have some stories you want to share, some questions, I am here. So drop a line, and let's keep the conversation going for a little bit longer. Roger says, I cannot wait to upgrade from the A6000 this summer. Roger, I cannot wait for that as well. I think you're going to accomplish amazing things. And if anybody can justify having a more boss camera, it is you. My friend, your photography needs more megapixels. <laughs> I'm stoked to see your content when you get a new camera. It's going to be fantastic. I'm stoked to see your content now. I'm stoked to see your content every day. You're amazing in terms of architecture photography. And if you're here and you do not follow Roger Holman, Roger, drop your Instagram in the chat so that people can find you. Let them know where you at. Aldrin says, what lens is glued to your camera at the moment? Right now and forever, my camera is stuck with the A, no, with the uh, 16 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 g master lens that lens is by far and away my favorite lens my lord that lens kicks so much ass it's the one that's pointing at me right now and is one that is constantly glued to my camera i love that lens but i also if i'm going for a hiking trip i bring these three i bring the 50 millimeter f 1.4 which is badass i bring the 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 which can handle everything. And I bring the 85 1.4, which can handle super badass portraits. So then you cover it all. You got the landscape, you got the wides, you got the tight for portraits. And with a wide, you can get in close for even awesome, more contextual portraits. I love those lenses. Those are my lenses. And the 16 to 35 might as well be glued to my camera. <laughs> Eric says, you up for Solomon Jr. 2021. Eric, you better believe it. You better believe it. Eric and I met at Solomon Freeski MTN. I don't know, what do you call it? Like a camp 
it was awesome. We went skiing for two days of just awesome rad skiing. And these kids, we were shooting, we were taking photos, and we were learning how to ski better from these pros. And these kids were sending awesome tricks off these badass cliffs. My God, it was so much fun. That's such a blast. Eric, I will definitely be back if they are willing to have me back. I loved it. And you know what? I hope you're back. I hope you come back. I better see you there if I'm there. <laughs> going to be a blast. I had fun. And you know what? I'm going to send it way harder than I did this year. I'm going to go upside down with the camera bag. I'm going to risk it all. Sometimes that's what it takes. <laughs> I'm going to put on the cool guy sunglasses. Eric says, let's see that backy. It's coming. I promise you. I put on the, I put on the cool guy sunglasses because it is coming. That's how much I believe in it. That's how much I believe in the backflip. The stream, ladies and gentlemen, is still going strong. We are still here, and I am still taking questions in the chat. If you are not in the chat, but you are watching, I recommend you get your ass in there and you share your story with us because we want to hear it. We want to hear how you spent the weekend. It was a long weekend. It was awesome. We got great weather, great experience, super, super beautiful weekend. I want to hear what you were up to. I was outside, which is why I'm sunburned. <laughs> I was outside all day today shooting. I hope you were outside shooting. If you're a photo person like me, I hope that is the only thing on your mind. I am not getting anything in the chat. I hope we have not run out of topics. Aldrin says, what's the best place to eat in Oslo? I like that question because I like to eat one, and I like Oslo, too. So I'm going to answer that question very succinctly, and that is my kitchen because I make the most badass cheeseburgers in the world. I dare you, I dare you to make a better cheeseburger than me. You cannot beat my chevra and mushroom fig marmalade burger. That is that end of the story. But if we are not eating in my kitchen... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is the best place to eat? A really fun place to eat is the street food hall in Oslo. There's a lot of different food, a lot of small things to eat, a lot of good beers, a lot of nice brews, a lot of cool people, a lot of noise, and it's a very happening place in Oslo. It is a cool place, and I highly recommend it. The Oslo Street Food Hall. I don't know what it's called officially, but it's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. Eva says the weekend was awesome for sure. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Hopefully we all enjoyed it. Hopefully there's a million more to come. Hopefully I see you out there with a camera and we can hang out and be camera buddies. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies again, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I am in the chat. I am answering your questions. So send me your questions or start some conversations. I will answer them immediately. Eva says, I was hiking, camping, swimming, and rowing an old boat for like three hours upstream. What? You're one of the most productive people in Oslo. I hope you realize that. You are very productive in unproductive manners. Rowing upstream, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? <laughs> as long as you're outside, I applaud it. Outside, that's exercise. That counts as nature. That's badass. Next time, bring your camera if you didn't bring it this time. Aldrin says, is it something you want to learn but don't have time? Oh, my God. There are a million things. I played bass guitar for a little bit, and I want to get better at that. I want to get better at music. Um, I really, I am ashamed to say this, but I really want to get better at video games. <laughs> I would love to be really good at video games. How awesome would it be to just show up and dominate online at video games? That shit's hard, and it takes a lot of time. That's something I would love to get better at. Having said that, there are a million things. I would, okay, I have, a, I have an answer. I have an answer. I'm taking off the cool shades for this answer. One thing I would love to get better at, but don't have time and don't have money, to be honest, is race car driving. I would love to race cars. I would love to get better at driving. I love go-karting and I dare you to challenge me to a go-kart race because I will whoop your ass 
And with that, I will put on the fast glasses because that is a promise. Let's go go-karting. But I would love to get in a bigger car as well and race that. Eva says, I'll teach you base. Do badass. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got to go buy a new base. Lars says, I'll join you. Let's find a track. Lars, if you want to go go-karting, I know of plenty. We should go to Rootskogen this year. Badass track. Fun track. Uh, if the weather's bad, we go indoor. We go to HHK, which is fun. It's good enough. I haven't found anybody who's beaten me there yet, just to let you know. <laughs> Ever says, was a professional bass player for like seven years. Whoa, that's badass. Professional bass player. Did you play in a band? That's so rad. Let me know. I want to know more about your bass playing. And hell yeah, I want to learn how to play bass. All I did back when I played bass was just memorizing songs. By the way, I'm left-handed. That's why I do that. Also, I use fingers because that's what men do. <laughs> Lars says, I'm in never driven go-karts outside. My Lord, Lars, we got to get your shit together. We got to get your shit together. We got to go go-karting. I think you would enjoy the hell out of it. There's nothing that beats it. It is the most fun thing in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining, we are just chatting. We are hanging out. I am answering your questions, whether it's about bass playing or go-karting or race car driving or the best burger in Oslo, which is mine. By the way, I dare you to beat my Chevra and mushroom fig marmalade burger. We are talking about whatever we want. And if you join the chat, you can chime in and help us. Just tell me about your day. Tell me about what's going on in your life. I want to hear it. I'm here for you. Today was a tough day. It's the first day back in the office for a lot of people, and that's hard. But I'm stoked you're back in the office. If you're not back in the office yet and you're not working yet, that's where the idea for this stream came, so I feel you. <laughs> I'm here. Come vent. Come hang out. Let's talk some shit. Ever says he was in a band called Flux and he freelanced with a bunch of artists around Norway. How cool is that? How cool is that? We have professional bass player in the chat. We got professional everything here. We got creatives. We got people who are good at stuff. This is rad. We got cool people hanging out in the chat. I am stoked to be hanging out with cool people. This is sweet. And if you have cool people things to talk about, I encourage you to put on your cool people sunglasses Bring it up in the chat. Let's talk it out. I want to explore. Roger says, tell me more about that burger. Roger, I can't, I can't give it away, man. I've already told you too much. I've told you too much. But I'll tell you another secret to a good burger. It's to mix the hamburger meat with chopped up bacon. That's right. You put the bacon in the burger and it becomes something else. It adds that saltiness. It adds a little bit more fat. It renders better. Oh, I've told you too much, Roger. I've told you guys too much. I'm giving away all my burger secrets. All my burger secrets. Oh, I can't keep doing this. My burgers are the best, man. Challenge me. I dare you. I dare you. Send me pictures of your burgers. I'll send a better one back. In fact, I made a cheeseburger right before this stream. I'm running on cheeseburger right now. Right now it is inside me. I'm turning it into poop. <laughs> Ever says, gave it all up to travel the world and take photos. Wow. Badass. You had a seven-year career that you decided to change lanes and come to the photography side of life. That is rad. That is rad. I'm pumped you did that. I hope you're attacking it with the same passion you attacked bass playing. Damn. Lars Kvala says, you guys should join the hiking trip on the 20th. Lars, thank you for reminding me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me use this as an opportunity to tell you that I'm taking off my fast glasses because I'm serious now. Lars, Sony, and myself, we are going hiking on the 20th. It's going to be awesome. I will post more about this soon. But... Just to warn you, we are going hiking in Oslo and we are going to sleep in tents and we are going to wake up for the sunrise and we're going to shoot awesome stuff. And you 
are invited. It's going to be the greatest moment ever. And you could be there. You could be there. We're going to stay up all night. It's going to be super sweet. And we're going to go skiing. It's going to be rad. And I'm putting back on the fast glasses. Because I said the word rad, that is my cue. It's going to be super sweet. Once again, I am going to post more about that. I'm going to give you more details. But June 20th, going to be a midsummer experience. It's going to be awesome. We're going to create a campfire. We're going to roast marshmallows. And we're going to cook dinner with our own hands. Maybe I will make burgers. You know what? That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Maybe that'll be the burger off. Maybe that'll be our chance to cook some burgers. Woo, how about that? Ever says, got to give it 100% or nothing. You know what? I agree. There are a lot of things in life I give 60%. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I give a lot of things 60%. But when it comes to career, it's got to be 100%. If you're not giving 100%, you're not in it for the right reason. Tom Arnold Hamra says, did you join up with a Solomon Free Ski TV when they went to West Coast Norway a couple of years ago? No, I did not. I would have loved to. I did not. I was not invited. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine? No, Solomon, beautiful. I am a Solomon, Solomon ambassador. Um, I rep the brand very hard. In fact, it is on the cap. It's on the back. I don't know if you can see it. It's on this side. Look at that. Beautiful brand awareness. That's what I'm here for. But they didn't invite me. Can you believe it? Hopefully next time. You know what? Next time I'm going to beg them. I'm going to demand. I might even create a trip myself and not invite them. How about that? I'm going by myself. <laughs> Ever says, let's do it. He says he is in for the burger bake off, which is happening on June 20th on the midsummer trip up to Nordmarka where we're going to hike and we're going to have a campfire and it's going to be super dope and you're totally invited. And I will post more details on my Instagram page. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be dope. I dare you to be my burger. I dare you. Once again, this is a call to action. If you think you can make a better burger or let's do this. If you think you can make a better burger or you can beat my time, at HHK go-kart track here in Oslo. Send me a picture of it, and I will admit defeat. But if you don't, you must admit defeat to me and hail me as the king of the burger and go-kart experience because that is what I am. This is big boy time. I am not fooling around. This is big boy time is what it is. Once again, the stream is brought to you by Sony Alpha. They are sponsoring this stream. They are a brand that I thoroughly believe in. I'm going to get serious. That's why I'm taking off the fast glasses. And they thoroughly believe in me. I hope they do. At least enough to sponsor this stream. And I'm happy they're here. And I'm happy you're here to experience it. And with that, I have been going for a very long time. I'm very impressed that we've made it this far. Eva says, if you guys make the burger, I am the best taster there is. Yes, I've toured California. <laughs> First of all, subtle brag with the California tour. Thank you uh, for putting that in there. Very humble of you. <laughs> Second of all, you will be our judge. I'm happy you'll be there to taste the burger. I'm pumped to have you there. I'm pumped for this experience together. We've been streaming for a long time. This has been, this has been a long one. This has been about an hour and 50 minutes. We're coming up on two hours. I might cut it there, but before you leave, I want to push. I have a stream tomorrow at seven o'clock. I'm going to be editing photos. I'm going to walk you through my editing process. I'm going to talk to you a bit about what it took to take the photo and how cool the experience was. And we're just going to hang out and chat and everything you post in the comment section, I will read and I will be responding to just like this. We're going to have a conversation, but I'm going to be editing photos at the same time and you're going to watch it and it's going to be dope. I'm going to put back on the fast glasses. I will be streaming on Thursday at 7 o'clock with Lars Kvala, who is in the stream. He is a Sony employee, super talented man. He knows his way around a Sony camera. And we are going to talk about technology. 
we're going to talk about our favorite technology, the cameras we use the most, and the cameras which are best at the best things, and the lenses, our favorite lenses. You're going to hear a lot of focal lengths, a lot of cool numbers, and you're going to see a lot of photos to back it up. It's going to be rad. I promise you. And then on Monday, I'm going to be streaming with the one and only Floris Smeets. Is that how you pronounce his name? I've only read his name. I don't think I've ever heard it. But either way, Floris and I are going to be sitting right here, right here in these very chairs. And we're going to be talking about photography. His photography, he's a wildlife photographer. He kicks a lot of ass. The dude is so rad. So it's going to be so cool to see his photos. It's going to be so fun. And I am stoked to see you guys there. So once again, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Thursday, 7 o'clock, and next Monday, 7 o'clock. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be streaming. And I hope to see you there and we can hang out and talk about your day and talk about what makes photography great and what makes us tick. For now, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this last two hours. I have. It's been a blast. I am happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. Go out. Do what you do. I believe in you. Make it happen. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.